Good morning, YouTube. It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It's July 28th. Today we're going to be uh, reading about Mean Girls. Um, the topic comes from 1 Peter 2, uh, verses 1 through 3. The morning version is the T as in Tom, L as in Larry, B as in boy, TLB version. Evening version of 1 Peter 2, verses 1 through 3 is the N as in Nancy, I as in icicle, V as in victory, NIV version. I actually uh, did this devotional reading uh, already this morning and did full discussion and uh, prayed for you guys in the commentary and closed out and started to upload and it just wasn't sitting right with me. And so as it was uploading, I quickly deleted the upload and um, now I'm starting afresh. And I want to tell you the reason why I did that really quickly. I did it one, it wasn't sitting well with me and two, I felt um, that I wasn't as open and as honest as I could be with you guys in the commentary. And I don't want to do that because I... I've said before that we're both going through this devotional, you and me, and that we're both learning through this devotional. We're both building our relationship with Christ through our day-to-day -day walk, through our time that we spend um, together during the devotional, uh, reading the devotional and meditating on it, those types of things. And so I want to be very honest, you know. Um, I don't want to come across any particular kind of way and, and that's important to me. So, uh, I'll start over if I need to start over, if it means that we both stay connected with God and we both, um, build, grow, right? Become better, right? Small sacrifice to become better. So without further ado, let's read first Peter chapter two, verses one through three. It says the TLB version reads, get rid of your feelings of hatred. Don't just pretend to be good. Be done with dishonesty and jealousy and talking about others behind their backs. Now that you Realize how kind the Lord has been to you. Put away all evil deception, envy, and fraud. Long to grow up into the fulfillment of your salvation. Cry for this as a baby cries for his milk. Right? The text says mean girls. We have all met them, been them, or been hurt by them. Women don't have to wonder much about the definition of this term because we coined it. Somewhere along the way, we got the idea that putting another woman down would elevate us. Whether we criticize her appearance, her personality, her situation, we are somehow under the impression that we will improve as she deteriorates. Each moment you are tempted to put down another woman, try raising her up instead. Lay down your jealousy for esteem, your criticism for compliments, your meanness for kindness. Imagine what that would do for the body of Christ. Our prayer for this morning is, Lord, no matter who I come across today, help me to be kind and loving. I don't want to engage in nasty thoughts or discussions, and I don't want to make anyone else feel bad. Help me to be positive and to encourage others around me today. 
The evening version of 1 Peter 2 verses 1 through 3 is the NIV version and it reads, Rid yourselves of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. The text says by engaging in the mean girl phenomenon, we are actually hindering ourselves from walking in the fullness of our salvation. What if we pull the curtain on the whole mean girl sham? What if we allowed ourselves to be vulnerable with one another and embrace each other with understanding? What if we choose to use kind words rather than harsh ones? This is the maturity that God seeks from us. The prayer for the evening is God help me to be mature in my faith. Help me to walk away from conversations that are unhealthy or untrue. Give me the integrity to speak well of people and to keep the nasty things to myself. The question for ourselves today is how have you felt bullied by your peers? Are you overly critical of other women? Give it over to God and ask him to handle the rest. Let me just first say that this devotional honeybees uh, uh, is geared towards women, right? But you and I are smart enough to know that we can drop the girls, can't we? Right? We can drop the girls part. We can put in instead mean humans, mean individuals, mean persons, right? Because we know males are just as susceptible to these lowbrow behaviors. Okay, malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander, deception, fraud. <laughs> All right, we know this. And and a lot of us have males in in our sphere that engage with us. I saw a really funny meme the other day on Instagram where uh, women were talking about filming your husband. They were filming their husband while they were pretending to be on the phone getting some juicy gossip, right? Like, what, girl? And just how their their husband stopped what they were doing to pay attention to what they were talking about on the phone. And even when they got up and walked out of the room, the husband followed them. <laughs> It was funny because I know, I know husbands like that. You know what I'm saying? And even my dad, if I'm talking to my sister on the phone, you know, and he's sitting there and he's watching TV and I'm like, did he really? Wow. Soon as I get off, my dad's going to say that was your sister. <laughs> yes, sir. Or oh, what she was talking about? Was she talking about a husband? No, sir. She was talking about the kid. Which one of them? <laughs> Listen, men are nosy too. Men gossip too. Men are envious. Men are jealous. Men are hypocritical, envious, deceitful. It's just no moniker for them. There's just no no label for them that I know of. You know, mean boys. There's nothing like that, right? So I want us to broaden our 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 minds with this because it's not just for girls. It is all ends of the spectrum, um, all demographics. I've worked in senior care and uh, I've seen male and female seniors that are uh, deceitful, <laughs> hypocritical, envious, slanderous, deceptive, fraudulent, right? Envy. Envy being the most prominent. There's a lot of jealousy in the senior community. Yeah. Yeah. As it pertains to their children, their children's status, you know, all of this. Right. And we've seen it in children. 
right? Uh, mommy hugs little Timmy before little Jimmy and little Jimmy finds a way to bring little Timmy down in mommy's eyes. Timmy peed in the bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, 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 it just really think about it. Just really, really think about it. We're, the Bible talks about we are born into sin, right? And so these things are a part of our, our, our breathing, our living, our existence. And they grow and they fester in these different ways as we have different experiences, I think, throughout our lives, high school, elementary, middle school, playground, uh, mommy circles, the, the, the jealousy, the envy, you know, the need to bring someone else down a peg or two. I think it's across the board, all genders, all demographics. So now that we're clear on that, we can move forward to how we can continue to glorify God in our behaviors. How can I continue to glorify God in my behaviors? I'll be completely honest with you. I have some thoughts in my head about some things that go on I see go on and I will go straight to my girlfriends <laughs> I'd be like do you see this this <laughs> this frackinackle do you see this this is some this is some straight up bull crap right and I'm fortunate enough to have Friends that I can go to and I can say, this is what I see. This is my perception. And we laugh and we talk about it. I'm also fortunate enough to have friends that say, girl, you're going too far. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I don't think it's what you're thinking. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think they mean it in that way. Or I'm praying for you. You know what I'm saying? You come in on your cycle. <laughs> you being mean. You being mean. You are being mean now. Okay. You sound like you might be a little jealous. Heck, at times I've said to myself, this might be the envy, but yada, yada, yada. This might be the jealousy, but yada, yada, yada. I can be completely open and honest with you guys about that. Right. Yeah. I think it's important to acknowledge it. I think it's important to say we all indulge. Right. But you can be too much of anything. You can be hurtful and you can be mean and it can be detrimental to your relationship with Christ. Especially if this becomes your pattern. Especially if you're unaware of how tearing down or deceiving others or um, being malicious towards others, um, being slanderous towards others. If you're missing the fact that it is also being deceitful and malicious and slanderous and envious towards yourself. Okay, you decrease when you increase these behaviors, your relationship with Christ, in my opinion, decreases. Just look at it from that perspective. I don't think there's anything wrong with having open, honest conversation and dialogue about behaviors that we see out here. I think it's important to be able to rightly divide. I do think that it can be done in a way that is not slanderous. I do think it can be done in a way that is not divisive. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with healthy dialogue. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, especially done in, in uh, trusted circles that can, um, there are checks and balances, right? Honest checks and balances, honest critiques, honest dialogue. 
And I think we have to be careful about hurting others. Are these behaviors that you're exhibiting meant to hurt others? Do you acknowledge that if they heard these things, they saw these things, that it would hurt them? Right? Now, sometimes pain is necessary to change and grow. Sometimes you have to have tough conversations with people. <clears throat> and it could hurt them. But does it glorify God? Is it necessary? Is it kind? These are all the things we have to ask ourselves. Sometimes it's not kind, but it's necessary. But again, when we maintain uh, our relationship with God, when we continue to deepen that, he will let you know when you need to bow out. He will let you know when you don't need to have any conversation about it at all. He will let you know when you're out of order, period. I'm going to continue and forever and always push a relationship with Christ, you guys, because I see how it has changed me. It has helped me. It has helped me to grow. Okay, it is important that relationship with God will let you know immediately if you're just having harmless fun, laughing and talking and just, you know, uplifting one another and joy, the joy of laughter and, you know, that type of thing. Or if you're being ugly, if you're being downright ugly. If you are ripping the meat the proverbial meat and flesh from their bones. The Spirit of God will let you know. The Holy Spirit will let you know if you have that relationship. There's some people that can do it day in and day out. It don't bother them. It don't bother them because they don't have that connection with Christ. And even though he still may be saying, you know you're wrong for that. That is not correct. That is not right. The volume is turned down so low on that thing, it, it's, it might as well be off. But God, I don't want to do wrong. I don't want to be a backbiter. I don't want to be a mean person. I don't want to be uh, uh, purposely evil, deceptive. I don't want to be envious. I don't want to be fraudulent. I want my behaviors to always glorify you. And if they don't, I want them gone. I want them checked. I'm never going to be a boring person. I'm always going to be. <laughs> I'm always going to be saucy at the mouth. I'm always going to be saucy at the mouth. I'm always going to have fun. I'm always going to pick fun. Right? But I want to be very, very clear about those behaviors that divide us, that separate us, not just from one another, because we need one another, but separate us and divide us from God. Separate and divide us from the Father, from our source, from our resource, from our ever-present help. From the lover of our souls, the lifter of our heads. If you're engaging in behaviors that ultimately rips the meat, the flesh from someone else's bones, depletes their spirit, tears down their esteem, then you're ultimately... Ripping the flesh from your own bones, depleting your own self, and tearing down your own esteem. This is just what it is. It's no way for you to pour poison out there for somebody else and not get any of it in you, inside you. 
on your hands and your eyes. When you look at it that way, it becomes a little bit more sensitive for you, right? When you look at the fact that Dragon Sally or Bob could actually be circling back around to drag you or your husband or your daughter or your granddaughter who not who's not even a thought yet it 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 hits a little differently <coughs> <coughs> Because the grave you dig for someone else, whether it be verbal or physical, ultimately could bury you. Okay? Just something to think about. Check your heart. It is my prayer for you today that you do a personal audit. I pray that you do a personal audit today. You don't have to check them all off the list, but do a personal audit today of one thing that you've seen within yourself that you're not necessarily happy about when it comes to engaging in conversation about others. Are you unnecessarily harsh? Are you talking about something as though you're concerned when really you're jealous and envious? Are you starting conversations that's meant to, to, to drive the conversation towards exposing someone, exposing a situation? Okay. Ask yourselves that. Be honest. This is my prayer for you. And after you have been honest with yourself about a behavior, be honest as to why you're doing it. What you're getting from it. And then don't chastise yourself. My prayer for you, for you is that you will be able to replace those feelings. With God's love. With kindness. With compassion. Or, if nothing else, with some shut mouth grace. Amen. That's my prayer for you today. I hope you guys have an absolutely fabulous day. And until next time, honeybees. Oh, did I tell you that I love you with the love of the Lord? And that there's nothing you can do about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. Okay? Until next time, honeybees. I'll holler.